In the first two sections of the Blender Topology course, we covered the fundamentals of topology, the correct way of filling the faces, the different types of faces. Then we modeled a pistol along with which we tried to get a deep understanding of the topology concepts. And now from this video onwards, we'll be starting the section number 3 of this course, More Topology Tools. This section will be having a total of 3 videos where in each one, we'll be dealing with a variety of different problems that might come while you're modeling or working on the topology and in this way we'll also take a look at exactly why using the correct topology is relevant in the modeling process. So to begin with the first thing that we'll do will be to understand what exactly can go wrong if we don't follow the correct topology tools and for this purpose we'll be taking the example of a cylinder. So let's first delete this cube by pressing X. So to add the cylinder press shift A then go to mesh and select cylinder from the list. Now immediately after adding the cylinder if you don't click anywhere else then you get this option of changing some properties of the cylinder with this menu and in this the first option is the cylinder vertices which as you all know simply define the number of vertices that will be there in a loop of the cylinder by default it is set to 32 and it is always suggested to keep this number in multiple of 4 because only in that way we will have an even distribution of the vertices which will result in the formation of a cylindrical object. Now everything looks simple till this point but if you take a close look at the cylinder you would notice that it's basically formed by these strips of faces that kind of form a closed loop which in the end results in the formation of the cylinder. Now this could also mean that if I press ctrl i to invert the selection and delete all the faces except this one then go to the top view and now if I create a duplicate of this strip then press G to move it place it over here and slightly rotate it and if I continue to do the same procedure again and again then this will create a loop that will again give us a cylindrical object but for now I'll undo all this and get back the cylinder in the scene as of now everything in the cylindrical model is completely perfect the placement of different vertices the way they are connected the filling of the faces all is uniform and even and so if I now switch to the edit mode then right click and select shade auto smooth then the output that we receive is also completely perfect with no shading issues however if I just switch to the edit mode then press 2 for the edge select mode select any one of the edges or let's say two edges then press x and select dissolved edges then basically the two edges will disappear but they are not deleted they are kind of dissolved meaning that the adjacent edges will now get connected filling the space between them but now if I return back to the object mode and change the angle then you will notice that even though the shade smooth is applied however it doesn't look very smooth on this particular part from where we dissolved the two edges in fact you can even try the same thing by selecting multiple edges one more time and dissolving them and due to this you will again notice the same thing but with a much higher influence you can very clearly see that due to the shade auto smooth this particular part of the cylinder looks perfectly smooth however when we come to this particular part the shade smooth does not appear to work perfectly on it and this is because we have disturbed the natural curvature or the geometry of the cylinder. This resulted in uneven distribution of the strips of faces and when this occurs it results in the shading issues. Now this was a very small example but suppose you have a complicated model and you just decide to either delete or dissolve some of the edges disturbing the natural and the even distribution of curvature or the strips of faces then in that case also you will be having some topology issues. Now another example in the same cylinder will be to just select one of the edges and then slide them over by pressing G twice and suppose I move it over here. Now return back to the object mode and once more if you notice very closely then you would see a very slight crease or imperfection in the smooth shading of the cylinder. But again it might not be visible when the adjustment that you do is very small. However I would again repeat that when you do the same thing in case of any complex object with a complicated geometry then you would get topology or shading issues in that specific model. Just for example in this case I again made some changes in the edit mode I just selected this edge over here and slightly move it forward in the y axis and even such a small change resulted in this weird shading issue that is visible on applying the shade auto smooth. So just to conclude while modeling anything just make sure to keep this in mind that the natural curvature of any object be it a cylinder or a UV sphere does not get affected because in that case you might end up getting weird shading issues. Now moving ahead what we are going to do is basically to remove the cylinder from the scene and I will be adding another cylinder and will change the number of vertices from this menu something like 64 and now if you're watching this video then I assume that you must be knowing about the boolean modifier and its usage because that's something 
we'll be using in this video to understand about another concept related to topology. But yes, even if you don't know about the Boolean modifier in much detail, then you don't need to worry because I'll be explaining you the basics and how to use it before moving to the topology part. Now coming back to the scene, I'll right click to apply the shade auto smooth on the cylinder and after this, suppose I want to create a hole in this cylinder and for this purpose, I'll first duplicate this cylinder by pressing shift T then right click to cancel the movement and we'll rotate it in the Y axis by 90 degrees. After this, let's scale it down by pressing S and scale it up in the X axis to increase its length. Now return back to the object mode and now we'll be using this duplicate cylinder to create a cutout or a hole in the original cylinder. And for this purpose, the modifier that we'll use will be the boolean modifier. So to use it, I'll first select the cylinder, then go to the modifier properties, click on add modifier, then in the generate category, select the boolean modifier. Now by using this modifier, you can basically create a cutout or a hole in the object on which it is applied depending upon which particular object object you choose as the target object here. So if I left click here and select cylinder.001. Now currently you might not notice any difference here and this is because we are having both the cylinders in the scene but if I now select the duplicate one and press H to hide it then you will notice that we are getting the desired results. However if I zoom in and take a careful look on the surface of the cylinder then we see that there are some shading issues which are making the surface look weird. If you can't see them properly then just open the viewport shading menu on the top and turn on the cavity option and here we can now see these lines that are not at all looking decent in terms of topology and the geometry of the cylinder. Now you might be thinking that why exactly is this happening and to explain the reason I'll first apply the boolean modifier from here then press tab to enter the edit mode press 1 for the vertex select mode and here you can see that in this loop of vertices which is forming this circle we are not having an even distribution of vertices. For example this particular face is having more than 4 vertices because we use the boolean modifier to create a whole here and this is resulting in the formation of n bonds and this is the exact reason of getting these weird shading issues in the cylinder model. Now as a solution to this problem you might think that we can simply merge these extra vertices by simply selecting them and pressing M to merge them like this. However as we already discussed this it could lead to disturbance in the natural curvature of the cylinder which would again result in topology issues later on. So this also cannot be a permanent solution to this problem and so we'll now be looking at a way using which will basically reduce the area of the surface on which the shading issue is visible. So for this I'll first switch to the side view then enter the edit mode and now we'll be using the knife tool and cut through the mesh. If you remember we learned about the knife tool and its use in the section number 2 while modeling the pistol and let's again use it in this example also to solve the topology issue. So first of all to enable the knife tool press K after this press C to enable the cut through then left click with the knife tool on the starting edge and just ensure that the height is slightly above this cutout region. So I'll first left click over here. After this, simply go over to the other end in the Y axis, then left click and press enter to confirm. This will simply add this loop around the cylinder. And now if I switch back to the object mode and zoom in, then here you can see that all the region above this loop created using the knife tool looks completely perfect with no shading issues. And because of this, we are only having the problem in this bottom region close to the cutout. And well, on the other hand, on this bottom region, we still have the topology issues on the entire area. So you can use the knife tool to create a cutout like this and basically reduce the influence or the region in which the shading issues will be observed. Now you can do the same thing on the bottom part also and if you're thinking that we still have the shading issues on this entire area which is below this loop then you can easily solve it simply by selecting each of the vertices and sliding them close to this circular loop. So in this way you can reduce the region where the shading effect or the shading problem is visible but yes this process can be very time consuming and so we'll now be looking at the shortest and the easiest way to use while working with the booleans to avoid the topology and the shading problems. So for this, I'll first delete this cylinder from the scene. Let's also unhide the cylinder.001 and now I'll be adding a new cylinder in the scene. Now before applying the boolean modifier to this cylinder, we'll be making some changes in its geometry. So first of all, let's switch to the edit mode and now what we're gonna do is to add two loop cuts, one on the top and the other one on the bottom around the region which will be cut out. So press ctrl R to add loop cut then use the scroll wheel to increase the number of cuts to 2 then left click right click to cancel the movement and let's scale them up in the z axis to set them apart. Now we have the exactly same thing that we previously had in the last example that is we have two loops around the circle that will later on reduce the area in which the shading issues will be observed. However to reduce even that area we'll now be adding some more loop cuts in this region between the two loop cuts that we have 
I've just created. And you can keep the number as high as you want. For example, over here, I'll increase the number of loop cuts to around 24 because having a lot of loop cuts will mean a very small or negligible area in which the shading issues will be observed. Now after this, let's again apply the boolean modifier. So first of all, I'll press H to hide the cylinder, then select this one. Let's apply the shade auto smooth. After this, go to the modifier properties, click on add modifier, then in the generate, select the boolean modifier and in the target object, we'll be selecting the other cylinder. And now you can very clearly see that we have a perfect shading both on the top as well as the bottom, which is because of these loop cuts that we added, which are reducing the region of the influence, giving us a perfect result. Also, if I go to the Boolean modifier and apply it and then switch to the edit mode, then here you observe that we again have a very clean geometry with more faces and details around the circular cutout. But yes, this does not mean that there are no end gones because if I switch to the vertex selection mode by pressing one, then here you you can see that we still have some vertices but the difference is that right now they have almost collapsed and are appearing on the circular loop itself because that particular area has now gone down because of adding so many loop cuts. Now this can be a very good example of how close you can get to perfection when you're working with things like topology, shading, geometry because first of all there is no right and wrong way to solve these problems and also your only target should be to achieve as perfect results as possible in order to avoid the shading issues. Now the next thing that we'll see will be that what will happen if we apply some bevel to this model. So press tab to enter the edit mode and now we have to select all the sharp edges in the 3D model for example those on the top and around the circular region and for this one of the ways is to either select them manually like this or else you can simply go to select menu on the top and then sharp edges. After this to apply the bevel tool just press ctrl b and on moving the cursor away you will begin to notice that we are getting some weird results around the circular region. So on the top and the bottom we get the perfect beveled edges. However, the reason why we didn't get the same for the circular region as well is that when we apply the bevel, the edges or the vertices kind of overlap with one another which results in the formation of these artifacts giving us these shading issues. Now to solve this problem, there can be multiple ways out of which the easiest one that a lot of 3D artists opt for is to buy some add-ons which include tools like offset cut which allow you to fix the mesh artifacts very easily. However, since such add-ons are paid and not many people might not be able to afford them, so I'll be showing you another way using which you can achieve smooth beveled edges with a clean look within the Blender software without the need of paying anything. So what we're going to basically do is to first remove the bevel that we applied by pressing Ctrl Z and after this instead of actually applying the bevel tool to our 3D model we can use some shader nodes to procedurally create the exact same result. So to see how it works we first have to change the render engine from EV to cycles then go to the render preview mode and let's also turn off the scene lights and the scene world like this. After that let's change this window of the timeline editor at the bottom to the shader editor so that we can then add the shader nodes here. So click on this icon on the left corner and select the shader editor. Then I'll click on the new button to create a new material with the principal BSDF connected to the material output node and after that we'll be adding a node that will create a kind of fake bevel or basically procedural effect which will make it look like the bevel tool is applied on the cylinder object and its name is the bevel node. To add it over here, press shift A then go to input and select the bevel. Let's place it over here and connect the normal socket to the normal in the principal BSDF and now you will begin to see the changes. The sharp edges of the object are now looking as if the bevel effect is applied to them. In fact, to see the changes in a better way, just go to the base color, reduce the brightness like this. Let's also increase the metallic value. Value. and by default with the bevel removed the cylinder object used to appear like this without any bevel applied to the sharp edges no roundness no curved look however on using the bevel node there is a clear contrast in the way the cylinder is now looking also it is very important to note here that we have not made any changes in the original geometry of the cylinder we haven't applied any bevel tool on any of these vertices or the edges we simply used a node in the shader editor and used it to create this procedural look also even if you increase the radius value which is basically controlling the amount of this bevel that you see, you won't notice any artifacts or any shading issues anywhere in this 3D model. So if you can afford to get the paid add-ons, you can use them to simply remove the shading artifacts due to bevel. But if you cannot, or if you just want a very simple solution, then that would be to use this bevel node in the 
shader editor and with this we now arrive to the end of this video where we started with developing the understanding of some more topics of topology some more tools like bevel boolean the ways to solve different shading issues and this was all in the part one of this section in the next video which will be the part two we'll be seeing some more topology tools and concepts so don't forget to subscribe to this channel press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming videos thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one